Well, we've got your boy back. We got a franchise player and a new world order in the house. So what's good? Welcome to Crazy Pinfalls. What's good, guys? Crazy Pinfalls, huh? What's yeah. I got to do a little Boston thing right there, for, especially when I'm from around here. So is it is it as crazy as the uh, pinfall that Cody did on uh, Andrade last night? Oh, my God. That was insane. Man, that finish yeah. was insane. That was... I just, I'm just, I'm just careful. I just, I'm just worried with fire involving matches, man. You know, it's, it's just uh, something not to really mess with, if in my view, my opinion. It was well, something. I'll tell you, after watching the show, I and mean, I did a, I was doing a lot, I was doing like live tweeting during the show, and then I did my roundtable pro some podcast last night. Um, I have Phil Lindsay from from Grab City on, and. Um, we were all tweeting back and forth, like, like, what's wrong with Cody's back? You know, I'm like, did he just like sunburn? Like, he's like peeling really bad, you know? And and then uh, it dawned on me, that's the shit that they spray on you before a fire. Yeah, because like, they get worse. Stuff yeah. Movie stars wear, right? So I'm like, are they doing it? And I'm like, wait a second, that table is way too close to do whatever they're trying to do. Yeah, because so, you saw the fire on them. You actually saw the fire on Cody when they when they both landed. They, they were still burning. The fire was still on them. The well, flight. there are three things that were wrong with that. One, he came to the ring for a street fight in wrestling gear. Yeah. As a wrestler for 29 years, I've never had a street fight where I came wearing tights and I came wearing a fucking ring robe and all this other bullshit. <laughs> um, secondly, some of the spots that they were doing – you knew they were setting up for something like some some kind of a huge ending, and everyone knows Cody likes to. Uh, Cody's like a comic book guy, so he likes the you know big flamboyant endings, and um, the whole flaming table thing. I mean, I knew something. I knew something like that was going to happen. And when it happened, I was like, "That's how he's getting his heat back." He's he's pretty much begging fans to be, please, please cheer me, please cheer me. But yeah. that's the biggest heel thing in all the professional wrestling to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, people like a draw day more. Uh, uh, people love a draw day more. Even when he was in WWE, they wanted him. Dude, people love a draw day more because they saw how good he is. I mean, like Cody tries too hard to be a baby face, right? Like, well, I'll tell you from personal experience, it is easier to be a face than it is to be a heel. Really? You know, it, it, you think of okay, classic example: Becky Lynch. She yeah. literally is. I mean, she's doing the most. Like she will go to she will go to Boston and be like, "Hey, f the Red Sox, f the Patriots." <laughs> you know, you know. Oh, Tom yeah, Brady yeah. was smart for leaving you guys. Like she would do that to get a to get heel heat, and it wouldn't work. That's how over as a face she is. Um, the first rule of, of being a wrestler is this: you walk out that curtain. The first thirty seconds of that curtain. Fans are either going to like you or they're going to hate you. Yeah. And the smartest thing you can do, and this is what I do when I go into new territories I've never been before, I find the one person in the crowd and I talk so much shit to that one person in the crowd that everyone around them is going to be like, oh, this guy's a jerk. Let's talk shit back to him. And that's how you build your heat. Like MJF. Cody, on the other hand, MJF. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cody, on the other hand, is doing this. He's like, I'm going to come out there and I'm going to tell people why they should cheer for me. First and foremost, as a wrestling fan, you don't want to be told what to do, right? Yeah. So I look at like Kurt, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle was the best, the best and biggest heel in all of professional wrestling. And a lot of tell people that they're like, what do you mean Kurt Angle is the biggest heel in wrestling? Quite simple. He came out and he said he has intelligence, he has integrity, and he has intensity. That he is the best wrestler in the world. And no one is better than him, and he dares anyone to prove it, right? Well, think about this. Have you ever won an Olympic gold medal with a broken neck? Yeah, that's the thing. You, you'll you <laughs> never see anybody do that. I mean, the closest person, I think, if Angle was still wrestling in his prime, well, Gable Stevenson would probably be the closest thing of this mm-hmm. generation's version of Kurt when he gets up to that level when he's ready. But it's just insane what Kurt did over the time. And it's amazing just from a fan's perspective for me growing up in that time. It was great. He was, he was just a natural. He was built for this. Like, 
there, I don't think there's one superstar like ever in wrestling, the wrestling world in history that caught on to wrestling so quickly as Kurt Angle did. And well, plus they, and they made it and he was an instant heel because yeah. think about it, the whole angle of the gold medal and stuff, even though it, he did it for the country, which is great. You walk into a, a different era, a different dynamic like he did and say, yeah, I'm a gold medalist and all that stuff. People who are literally like we're hardworking blue collar people are not going to like it. Yeah, he's from Pittsburgh, which is blue collar. But the difference is they're not going to like the fact that you're shoving something and achievement <laughs> in front of their face 24 seven. You know, and the worst part about it is everything he said was true. <laughs> so you're just like, God, I really hate this guy. I hate him because he's telling the damn truth. Like, that's what made him such a great heel. Kurt Angle never lied. <laughs> he never lied. And that's what put him over as such the, as the biggest heel in wrestling. Like you can, you can be the Ric Flairs, you can be the Bruiser Brodies, you can be the, the, the Hulk Hogan's, you can be whatever, and no one's gonna top Kurt Angle as being the biggest heel because Kurt Angle never fucking lied. Yeah. So Rob, what are your thoughts on on this up too? Oh, I I agree with that, wholeheartedly. Uh, you know that's you. It, everything you said is right on. Kurt Kurt Angle. Uh, the ultimate hill, and I think the only other person that could do something on a on a getting hill heat was Ric Flair. Um, I mean, I I I've seen the Flair in the '80s in Texas, and how um, <coughs> that I, mean, I, I got people were willing to go to jail just to get to him, you know. So yeah, because they, they love Dusty. They again. love Dusty. The Dusty was like, the, like you could say Hogan was probably the biggest star of the '80s, but Dusty is right up there. Not in Texas, he definitely. Was, well, I'll tell was, you, look, I wrestled all over, man. Texas, Tennessee, all those places, and I'll tell you, the one place, Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, those are the three places in the United States that wrestling is real, mm-hmm. and, and fans take it seriously. Like you think. You think like cowboy fans in Texas take football seriously? No, they take yeah. wrestling seriously. It's yeah. the same um, way up here with hockey, with Bruins exactly. hockey or New England sports. It's the same way anywhere. Once you have you sink your teeth into something you absolutely love and care about, it's it's there. I got pepper sprayed in Indiana one time by a fan because I was doing the heel gimmick and I beat this the logo face guy up, and I did it two nights in a row and. Kids were in the crowd with signs saying I suck, and I went and grabbed the signs and ripped them up, and I made a little girl cry. You know, mm-hmm. the next night we're in another town, and the same families at the show. So I was like, "Ooh, I'm gonna go mess with that little girl again." <laughs> she has a sign. She's like, "I suck, you suck, you suck," and I walk over and I ripped the sign. Right? She goes, "You suck," and I'm like, "And your mom swallows." Oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those shows. Um, <laughs> I, I legit got Ric Flair heat right there because uh, the whole crowd started chanting "fuck you, fuck you," right? Because I picked on a little girl. Yep. Great heat, great heat. So the night's over. I'm standing outside and I'm talking to Homicide, and he's like, "Bro, you got some real serious heat." I'm like, "Yeah." And all of a sudden, I hear this, "You son of a bitch!" And I turn around. The lady had come across the parking lot with a can of mace. Oh, oh no! Spray oh. me in the face. Now keep in <laughs> mind, I was in. Indianapolis, Indiana, and we had to go back to Louisville, Kentucky. That's a good two-hour drive. I'm driving all the way back with the guys oh, with mace in my face, pouring oh. in my face to keep from burning to death. Oh, fans of those areas, man, they think wrestling is real. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do. I mean, think about it as a kid when you watch it, you think it's the realest thing, and then you realize when as you grow up, it's not. It's like, it's like telling people certain aspects of life ain't, is is not real but you know it to them it is it's it's all due to perception of everything well i'll mm-hmm. shoot a hot take to you right now mma is not real how about that i'll tell you 2006 san francisco california the cow palace there was a wrestling show that was called wrestle fan fest it was produced by big vision entertainment had so many big names on the show. We're talking about the Dudleys. We're talking the Road Warriors or Animal, at least. Um, you know, like all of these huge former ECW, WWE, and NWA guys 
and former WCW guys. It was like this huge show. It was three nights. Okay. The first night was wrestling and MMA. No, the first night was wrestling, and the second night was MMA, and then wrestling late at night. So we're in the locker room talking, and Don Fry and Dan Severn were there. That's when Dan Severn was the NWA world champion. And um, they were all just hanging out, you know, whatever, whatnot. <laughs> and this guy says, okay, man, so the start of round three, a minute into it, I'm going to hit you with this finisher. And he starts laughing because he's like, oh, yeah, well, a bunch of wrestlers finisher. I said, no, I'm going to hit you with a guillotine. I'm going to choke you out first minute of the third round. And I looked up and I said, did you hear that shit? They talk about how wrestling is staged, but the MMA guys who are real are <laughs> prepping their match. <laughs> yeah, it, it's and that, it's it's just like it, anything else. Like I, 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 I can't ruin Christmas stuff, but obviously, you know, people have these ideas in their head that certain things are not real or or myth or something like that. It's also a psychology into itself. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's the same way with wrestling. I mean, some people can just pull certain things and make it work. I mean, you know, we're doing a tournament for a title right now for like a community title. And, you know, we've had some amazing promos, especially from this one down here, which, you know, it it's just one of those things that if you can pull that creative juice out of you, it, 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 it goes a long way to make people think that it's real enough to do so, then, you know, you've hit your money on your mark. You know, look at AEW, oh for example. They've got MJF, you know, Orange Cassidy. They brought Punk, Danielson, and stuff like that. And these guys are pulling amazing work out of each other. Whereas, you know, WWE, you know, a lot of people are turning off Raw right now for the most part. It's a shame, though, because the, the, the WWE superstars, they can work when they when, they, oh, when yeah. there's effort for them. They can work. It's just, there's too much entertainment. There's too much entertainment that they... It's more so not about the yeah. the wrestling. The pay per views, the pay per views, wrestling, the wrestling, WWE. Their pay per views, um, the matches themselves, they're actually kind of fine when it's just a pay per view, and it's but with with the shows, Raw and SmackDown, even NXT 2.0 to a point. Uh, like I'm, I'm, I'm a little like NXT 2.0. Uh, I'm, 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 I have issues with it. It's just that. They put too much effort into storytelling, which you kind of need to get people invested, but it's just the way they do the storytelling. Like, we know, we know, like, what the hell? And the, 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 the mass psychology is how they sometimes end matches and stuff. Like, like it's like, a, they can, sometimes you have like three or four DQs in one night, or like a wall up, three or four wall up pins in one night. Like, we don't need that. Simon Miller on, um, Simon Miller on, um, what culture has a, um, a roll up counter. <laughs> And he calls it the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. And literally, he's already up to like 150. Oh. And he started it like in June. <laughs> so it's so bad. And he's only doing it with Raw. Oh, like, the, and then just picture now. how bad that's going to be. I mean, what did you think about AEW this week, Rob? I know you covered some of it. So, yeah, it was it was good. The, the show was good. They're, um, the the only thing that I kind of was confused about, and, and I've seen a lot of people say the same thing, was the uh, the promo this week with uh, Punk and MJF was it was still solid, but it wasn't. There was something when they when MJF brought up Britt Baker, it got really weird. Yes, um, yeah. I don't that, know why. Even though, even that though was I not needed. Yeah, it, that was that was kind of weird because. The the problem though, like there is, uh, most of the fans that tune in to AEW, or I shouldn't say most, majority of the fans. Well, that's the same word. A lot of fans know what's going on. Like they know that CM the Punk hardcore AEW fans, and they know that for the most part, they know that yeah. uh, Adam Cole and Britt Baker are are together. Yeah. But the the aspect is that I came up with, even if you didn't know that these people were together, like that Punk's married to Lee and stuff like that, there was really no 
it didn't really make any sense. They made that. They made that. They made that known on the first dynamite. Oh, I, call I, yeah, I know. I know they. Yeah, they know that. And yeah. Tony Schiavone has like made comments about it too. You know that. So yeah. it's, it's not. It's in canon. You know. So it's part of the stories. Yeah. It was just weird. It's. It yeah. was. I don't know. And CM Punk's reaction to it kind of made it feel like. Like he didn't know it was coming. You know. And yeah. I think that was part. It was kind of weird. I don't. I. I would. Love That's to my know little worry about AEW. It's the oh. the non scripted promos. I mean, I think most of the promos are great, but when sometimes when there's non scripted promos, you don't know what the other person's saying. It could like confuse the uh, the other per, the other wrestler yeah. at times. Yeah, but and the thing uh, is, Punk is but the thing is, CM Punk is one of the best at improv. So yeah, yeah, he's oh yeah, I, that's he's one just guy phenomenal. Go yeah, but other than that, I mean, the matches. They're the like every week they're solid. Britt Baker yeah. or uh, Chris Statlander and uh, Soho tore it up. Um, the main that was event, a great match. the main event was was what it was. I I I figured Cody was going over. That's because I figured Cody is going over in every match. Um, yeah. I, the one Basically. thing I will say. Um, I, and I, I'm wondering if it's just a, a bit, or what it is. But the the, the grabbing the uh, the sledgehammer and then the uh, golden shovel. It's, oh, that was a dig at WWE. That was a dig at Triple yeah. H right there. Yeah, it's a dig at Triple <laughs> H. But Cody Rhodes is a Triple H of AEW. Yeah, he but, is. Okay, so so okay, I got I got I got a comment on that because someone told me someone said that earlier today. Um, I think it was um. It was Luke Owen that said that, um, and I don't agree with that for the simple fact that if Cody was the Triple H, if Cody was Triple H of AEW, he would already be world champion like six times. Um, <laughs> he wouldn't, he wouldn't take himself out of the world title picture. No, and that part know. I that part I agree with, but I think that from the aspect is he should, um, he should put out Johnny over. I think he's just salty. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I mean, like, like seriously, I think he's just salty as fuck. I personally think Andrade should have won that match. Yeah. Well, well, okay, well, a... I don't think Andrade should have won that match for the simple fact that the Death Triangle. Oh, I yeah. mean, the Andrade and his group have been winning this whole entire time. The story needs to finally progress. He finally yeah. needs to get the hell away from fighting these guys. Like they, they need to be done. You know, it needs to be done and over with. Like, okay, walk away. The gimmick's done. Like a, a match like the street fight. Any any person has been in the industry any any length of time knows that right there is a the blow off spot. That's the blow off match. There should be uh, nothing else. Yeah. You yeah. know. Now yeah. next week Cody comes on and says, "Now we got to have a Tijuana street fight." And, oh, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> you know, yeah. like he's seriously or if they the story were in, for himself. Or if they he came on and when they were in Boston for a Salem witch trial fight. Right. <laughs> yeah. see, like, these crazy like, or, or, at, or, or uh, about when winter's coming in two weeks like Game of Thrones street fight <laughs> right but actually the, the, the witcher would make more sense considering yeah. that's still around <laughs> but the, the but the shovel thing um people online have been saying that Cody like he did the Anthony Gogo thing oh Cody just comes on here to bury people <laughs> Cody is horrible at this Cody's horrible at that think about it Cody literally puts himself in storyline gimmicks like he did with Brody Lee just to get his ass beat to put someone over so he can be gone for three months. And then yeah. he comes back. And then he loses again. Like like with the with the Malachi Black thing. He's lost like four fucking matches. Yeah. yeah. Back, yeah. You know? No, like, I, I get that. I'm, I'm to I the point just... where, please, just stop wrestling him. <laughs> yeah. I, Is that I his promos? That. Is that his promos are too bite me baby face at times? You know? That promo that Cody is that Cody is cutting. Oh, this is, let's just be. Oh my God, that's a great picture. Sorry, let's just be honest. <laughs> Cody is doing this thing because he's wanting to irritate people to the point to where, like, like Cody's a heel. He's a delusional heel right now. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's call that what it is. Cody is a delusional heel. No, they really love me. If I go out, and I said this on my show last night, if if I go out there and I take off these amazing Jordans. And I throw them out to the crowd. The crowd's going to love it. If I throw my weight belt out to the crowd, they're going to love it. Well, look, I'm a Jordan aficionado. I got 186 pairs of shoes. Damn. I love my fucking Jordans, right? 
if he threw, and I want you to think about this, he threw one shoe into the crowd. One shoe. What the fuck are you going to do with one shoe? <laughs> you got to hobble that. or you, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah, if I hurt that one shoe, I'm going to be like, where's the other one? I can't wear it. <laughs> What, did you sign it? Am I gonna be able to put it on eBay? That you like, no. Yeah. You know, Cody is playing. Cody is working the. He's working the fans. He's working the boys. Cody is a mastermind at mind fucking people. But also, do you think he pigeonholed himself like yep. creatively for the <laughs> most part, like everybody yes. else is doing? He did that right from the start. Yeah. It. it, it Eventually, they're going to have to pull him out and put him in a different direction. I mean, it's ridiculous to see him like get to go into these matches and all of a sudden have amazing matches, but everybody looks at the other stuff first. I mean, it almost feels like for him in AEW, for the most part, for other than what he's doing behind the scenes, for me at least, because I watch AEW now off and on, and I look back at him in WWE and back, it almost seems like he's leaning back on what he knew rather than what he should know or does know rather than just progressing forward. Do you think that's the case, Rob? Oh, yeah, to an extent, I think so. Um, I don't, I don't know, like if I don't know about progressing, but I, I mean, I, I agree to an extent. Yeah. I mean, it, could it be, what would you do if you were in his shoes to change the situation other than just putting himself in the title belt? Like, there's got to be something they have to do f- to make him more creatively not like the way he is. That I See, that I don't know. Like, I really don't know what they can do. Um, I, I'm willing to bet Bad Boy could probably answer that better than I could because I really I really don't know because he has that, he has that heat that, he has that go-away heat kind of yeah. with but um he can't really go away so how are you going to fix that like for if he if he turns the way they the thing is if he turns people are going to cheer him then and then that just yeah kinda, i don't know i don't know i think i think he might turn and the only way i mean he's been what, turning heel this whole time what he has to do if he wants to be the major major heel is he has to take his brother out <laughs> that's oh, that's what I got one even better. Yeah. He needs to take Tony Khan out. Uh, oh. be, that would be interesting. I'll put it to you this way. I, run, I run a wrestling company here in Portland, Oregon, and we do a weekly television show. I'm one of the top faces on the company, and I tried to turn heel, and the fans wouldn't. Be, we we call it the we call it the um, the um, the Hall and Nash syndrome. No matter yeah. what you do. They end up they booed. Never get booed. Yeah, they won't remember Hall and Nash came in. They beat up all the WCW with Law and Daughter, Rick. Uh, Rey it was Hogan. It was Hogan gained the boost. Yeah, Hall and Nash were never it getting was, it. Hall and Nash never got booed. It was like yeah. all that. But the the point is, when you have that Hall and Nash syndrome, where people just won't boo you, you have to do something so heinous. I attacked a seventy five year old woman, and the fans told me, "Kill her." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Damn. I'm like, this is a 75 year old woman, and you want me to kill her? Like, what the hell is wrong with you people? Mm-hmm. Same thing. Oh my god! Everyone loves Tony Khan. Tony Khan is like, he's the anti Vince McMahon. You know, everyone that works for everyone that works for AEW says, "Hey man, yeah. I can walk up to Tony Khan and throw and be like, hey Tony, I got this idea, I want to try it.'" And Tony would more likely like, "Hey, let's go ahead and try it," as opposed to sitting outside Vince McMahon's office for ten freaking hours. <laughs> To get two minutes of his time, so you can say no, no power. We're not doing this, pal. You know what I'm saying? Why is he, like doing it there all the time. Just I know he has like plans, but like make people wait for that long. Come on. <laughs> so if you attack, if you if you beat up, I mean, look, they tried, they did the whole gimmick with Jim Ross. Remember that who was it that beat Jim Ross up or, sho- or shoved Jim Ross or had this feud with Jim Ross or wherever it was? Well, was it? Uh, uh, un- well, Undertaker did. Did he get heat for it? Nope. No. Mankind, uh, that interview yeah, mankind. with Mick Foley, where he I mean, put him on fire. Too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but you see what I'm saying? Like, some people just can't get that. They just won't get over it yeah. with that heat. Now, if Cody wants to do that, I think for me personally, if Cody wants to turn heel and he wants to really, like, really fuck the internet up and really just totally just, like, throw everybody, just, just anger everybody. 
Cody shit cost uh, Hangman Page the world championship. Yeah. Because right now Hangman Page is the darling. He's the indie darling of fucking AEW. He's like, he's the most amazing guy in, in AEW. So if he can turn Brian Danielson heel, think about that. Cody, I'm loving Brian he's, Danielson heel. I love his heel, Brian Danielson. I mean, Cody already came out and was like, and, and I don't think anyone really caught the why he said in the promo. But if you go back and watch that promo where he came out and was like, if it wasn't for me, I, I wanted to change the world. If it wasn't for me, there would be no AEW. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be sitting here in the crowd cheering your 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 your, your favorites and booing your bad guys. If it wasn't for me, Tony Khan would never came in here and made AEW. If it wasn't for me, we wouldn't be on this station on television right now. So basically, that was a you people promo. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and and you know how everybody loves the uh, uh, you people promo. Right? I mean, <laughs> come on, now. everybody loves the you people promo. <laughs> I was surprised someone didn't be like T Pain and be like, "What do you mean, you people?" You know, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's fun because now it's like I like I every, a lot of people know I work at an oil chain shop, so like sometimes I'll hear like people talking about certain things. The technicians I have that work yeah. for me talk about certain things and all of a sudden i'll hear you people and i'm just sitting there oh my god and the person that's the most common cut in that his name's freddie he's 66 years old and he literally will get upset and start speaking spanish and also right afterwards you people and i'm just sitting there snickering with wrestling terms in my head just picturing <laughs> up with a mic and just going off it's just so perfect <laughs> i mean it, it, we give it we give everybody like a nickname for oh, everything Trump. Yeah, uh, we give a nickname for everybody in the shop, and literally one we call him the uh, any he, if he's watching. What's up, Freddie? Um, <laughs> we we call him the old man from Pawn Stars. Oh, like, oh exactly who passed away? Yeah, the thing. grandfather, yeah. right? The grandfather and the, and the father of the uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who said the yeah. old man from Pawn Stars? That's so wrong. Yeah, well, it's true. I mean, are you an anime fan? Also, my daughter. We'll get back is. To all right, um, in Dragon Ball is a character called Master Roshi, and yeah, Master oh, Roshi. Yeah. <laughs> he is like a spitting image, personality-wise, to him. So I mean, well, he's a um, he's he, I mean, he's a perv, Master Roshi. <laughs> he's a perv. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. Huh. <laughs> it's okay. Um, other than that, we'll keep going and stuff like that. NXT, we've got a lot of meat on NXT right now. Not for the 2.0, but to compare and trash and everything that I wanted to get into that real quick. At this point with NXT 2.0, some of this content's okay, but it could be better compared to NXT. At this point, we've got a, a good about maybe what five or six months, maybe a little less of uh, stuff to compare to. So, where are you guys' thoughts of NXT at this point? compared to NXT 2.0, if you have to compare the two, which one oh. do you think was better, a little bit wow. better? That's oh, well, question. yeah, that, it's, uh, I, I think NXT, be, uh, well, I'll say this, before the releases started happening, yeah. um, NXT was still, I think, fantastic. Um but then when they decided to do these releases and then go in their d different direction with doing the rebranding, I wasn't so sure. Now, after a couple months into it, the wrestling is getting better. I'm starting to get more into the characters. I'm glad that people are starting to see Joe Gacy for... They're, we're going to start seeing the Joe Gacy that a lot of us know can wrestle, the guy that used to be hanging out with Eddie Kingston. Oh, you mean the indie guy? Yeah, the indie <laughs> guy. I'm, I'm ready for people to see the indie Joe Gacy. Um, that's that's one of the good things about this. Um, Braun, 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 Breaker. Braun Breaker is going to be oh, a sorry. huge star. I don't know why they turned him heel. He should not have turned heel. I know uh, that they... This is not really it. This gimmick or this thing they're doing yeah. is not really a heel. It's, they're doing the Survivor Series type thing where they're just representing their their brand. Breaker will be cheered on just like that. So right now, 
the whole old school versus new school thing, yeah, it's stupid to me because yeah, yeah. If you got the old school, I, I mean, I'm cool with the old school guys. You know, Tommaso Ciampa. You got fucking Gargano. Even <coughs> even what's his name? Even Pete Dunne. Mm-hmm. But L.A. Knight, dude, just came like six, like yeah. like a year ago. How's he old school? Like, come I think on. <laughs> yeah, I think they're going that route because he was there before they went to the 2.0. If it, they should. They should. I, they should have I guess it's because it's where the older guys are wrestling. <laughs> then why didn't they put um, Kyle O'Reilly? <laughs> He's still there. I don't know. Oh, because he has a tip of the, the boring Von Wagner who was. Oh. Who's flopping? That guy has no. I'm sorry, but I don't know what they see in him. He has no personality. He's boring as hell. You need to do something for that guy. I think that's, I think that's the point. <laughs> really? I think that's the point. I, if that's a point, I say I'm. This doesn't work for me. I, I think. Wide, I think for me though, I, I like the old set, uh, old NXT better than this one for the most part. If you. To me, I think if you brought the new cast of characters that they have into the old set way of NXT, I think it would have. Rob's having computer issues, probably. Is um is actually would thrive even more, and with the additions they had on that roster at that point, and then with Mandy Rose on that roster the way she is now, I think the they are literally the number one women's. Um, wrestling promotion all around if you do individual now the problem with me with 2.0 is is that i i watch it and i wonder where is this going like where is some of these stories going where so it it has me like gripped to watch it and wanting to watch it and keep watching it but i like something where there's a story and it keeps progressing I, into something i'll tell you the better. two breakout stars nxt 2.0 carmelo hayes for me, it's number one. Probably Braun Breaker. Local Boston boy. Okay, so my issue with this whole with 2.0, like, my whole issue with WWE in general is that Vince McMahon thinks you guys are all stupid. Yes. Like, that. that that's, that's point blank. Vince McMahon thinks that you guys are all stupid. He thinks that, oh, well, you know, I'm going to bring this guy in, and, oh, wait a minute, this guy's been on the indies, and he has a name, and he's built like Keith Lee. Everyone knows Keith Lee. He's amazing. Oh no, let's call this guy Bearcat Keith Lee. Let's let's give him a stupid name and a stupid gimmick. Karrion Cross. Everyone knows who Karrion Cross is. He came from the Indies. He came from you know he went to Impact Wrestling. And all, you know he did some good shit in AAA. Oh, let's make this guy a, a, a sex uh, a, a gimp. You know a, a BDSM guy. Let's do this. You know no one's gonna know this guy. You got Braun Breaker. Who who is a freaking Steiner? He's Bronson Steiner, Bronson Rick Steiner. Just let him call himself Bronson Steiner, Bron Steiner. If you want to go ahead and do something stupid like that, you know, like think about it. The comments that they make. Oh, this guy's like a dog faced gremlin. Oh, you know the whole Steiner math thing that that Johnny Gargano did with him. You got a thirty three and a third chance of winning this match, dude. Come on, we're not stupid. Just say he's a fucking Steiner and get it over with. Just yeah, like but, give him the opportunity to grow as an individual. Yeah, it has all the tools. It's just, just worry about a name. It's just that name. It's just that name. It's not good. I mean, let's, let's put him out there in a singlet with the same tattoo that his dad has, and make let's, him let's sound like sounds just like his. Does that have a wear headgear? Yeah. Yeah. He cuts a promo like his dad. You know, yes. like he's the, the siren like, like his the siren like his uncle. You know, he has. A, let's just let's call him Rick Bob or some shit. You know, like come on, like, I have Bronstein. <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> the other the Man. other thing too is that, um, the 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 thing with WWE in general is, it took me. I said it before, like in other podcasts and stuff, but WWE is just not geared towards the smart fan anymore, or it never really was. But it's since Nick Khan has come in, it's it's about keeping your intel in your property basically is they want to keep everything commercial mm-hmm. like for their part they want to make sure that's why they want to change names when you come in they because they don't want they don't want steiner to leave in three four years to go to aw and have that and take his name yeah. that's why they're doing this broad 
Braun Breaker stuff. It's yeah. it, it, the thing is, it is it is what it is, and it could be better. But they're doing their business the way they want to do it, and oh well. I, I mean, and also, quote unquote, business is supposed to be great, but it really isn't. I mean, the, if you look at everything, they're they're just like looking at letting go amazing talent and rather than just giving a good product or anything. I mean, why do they do just... what AW does? Build up factions and stuff. Like they have barely any factions. Do something like that. You put it together so you have more people on TV. Do something like that. I don't know. Like they oh. they need to. Uh, they primarily need to build up more or more tag stars teams. and tag teams and different things. Because of Wall, Wall, it's like four tag teams: Street Profits, AJ and his, and, uh, and his tag team partner, um, the tag team oh, champions, and uh, and and uh, the Dirty Dogs. That's basically it. It's like the whole tag team. Vince doesn't like tag teams. Vince doesn't like tag team wrestling. Oh yeah, it's true. Ever Vince since the doesn't Heart like anything. He bees, can't have fun. It's like. You know, but, Back when 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 Pat Patterson was alive and Gerald Briscoe was working there, that's when tag teams flourished. Now they don't give a shit about tag teams. They don't give a shit about women. Giant John Laurinaitis came back and instead of having amazing women's matches, we're having a tournament where the longest match went two minutes and thirty seconds, and the whole tournament, and we're talking eight matches, and the whole tournament went twenty one minutes combined. When one match of AEW's TBS uh, TBS title yeah. tournament last night went 21 minutes by itself. And that was a great match, yeah. And that's the other thing is, is that they're cutting out so much great talent and so much content. I'm glad, I'm glad they're SmackDown. literally wasting this talent. I'm glad SmackDown, they're starting to use Tony Storm in a title picture program with Charlotte Flair. She probably like won't go over, but she should. Like, but I'm glad they're using Tony Storm because she's been when she was at NXT in the US, in the US, and when she was in the UK, she was great. But in the US, she was highly underused, and she was basically jobbing out, kind of in the in the US. NXT. I hope Tony Storm leaves and goes to New Japan. I hope she just goes and hangs out with fucking her fiance and oh, just get it in over there. I mean, for me, I want to see Tony do really well, and I think. You know, if they had to do anything with her, just if they had to put her back down in NXT, which would be like some people think it would be a downgrade for the most part. But it, if they just gave her the option, like they were supposed to give Aleister Black the option to do so, to go back down like some of them, then half of this talent wouldn't have gotten released possibly. It's just Vince doesn't, like you said, don't care. He does rather control everything the way he wants, and it doesn't really make any sense. I mean, it, it for me, I, I think that NXT needs to be better. They have a night all to themselves. They're not competing with AEW. They don't have to worry about quote-unquote ratings when Vince can, and Nick Khan think that it's all about sleep as their enemy. It's just, you know... It's ridiculous. It really is, and those conference calls are funny as hell. By the way, if you ever hear, I've been on the, I've been on the media calls. I know, man. Some of the shit that's been said, like the <laughs> fact that <laughs> the fact that right after they released fucking forty six people, <laughs> like literally after they released forty six people, there's a, uh, there's a there is a there was this fucking thing that came on this this comment that. They said uh, most of the WWE superstars are like Marvel. They're like Marvel characters. You know, they're their, they're their own brand, and they should build their own brand. You know, we we plan on being the next Marvel. And I'm like, are you Bullshit. fucking kidding me? Marvel has a shit together. How many people have Marvel <laughs> released in the last? Five? <laughs> I, 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 Marvel has a also, shit together. WWE doesn't. <laughs> and also, you got to look at it this way: if Mar they were going to be Marvel. They wouldn't have cut half of these people's talent, which are considered, you, you know, they private build their contractors. Own brand. Marvel that, build their own brand. Yeah. They build the characters. WWE has to do That's the difference between Marvel and WWE. But also they wouldn't have cut them under, underneath their yeah. knees because and take all the Twitch stuff. Iron Man, you've been released. <laughs> yeah. Iron Man, goodbye. You've been released. Right. 
Black, Black Widow, Widow, sorry, you've been released. Future Endeavors. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks later, Iron Man shows up DC. <laughs> Iron Man shows up. <laughs> Iron Man shows up at Superman's house. Can I get a job? <laughs> no, Iron Man shows up in freaking um, all the way out in Japan doing like anime versions of himself just to no, get no, by no. and stuff like if that. You watch, if you watch Infinity War when Thanos snapped everybody, snapped all the people, all those people went to the DC verse. Then it came hey, back. I, I gotta say this though. I gotta say this. Did you guys see the movie um, The Eternals? Yeah. I haven't yet. Okay, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ruin it for you. I have, to. but I will tell you this: Thanos is not the bad guy. Oh, I see what you hey. see. Your point. <laughs> Did you um, have you watched Hawkeye yet? As a matter of fact, I'm about to watch episode three. Yeah, oh, that's a good episode. It's a lot of stuff in this episode. The, I already screwed up, and I listened to a podcast, and I know what happened. Oh. Because I'm watching okay. that in the flash at the same there's time. So there's a tease. There's a, there's, a picture, there's a picture surface online. Uh, I don't know if you want to search it. It's teasing for episode four. Oh, I know Wilson Fisk. Is gonna, I know Kingpin's going to be in there. No, it's a different. Well, actually, this character's actually been confirmed. Yeah, Kingpin's definitely in it. Because like, Kingpin's the the uncle. Yeah. Of, of, of Echo, so I think that's yeah. Echo's uncle. Because in the comics, he, Echo works for him. You see Black I'm Widow. Good. Yeah. Shut I have. up. Elena Belova, be... isn't it? Elena Belova. She's in the series. She's been confirmed in the series. Oh, she, <laughs> she might be watching now. She's she's rumored for episode four next week's episode. Well, I, I knew she was going to be in it, and so is um um Valentina. Yeah, yeah, the rumor next week. Yeah, you, you gotta love how there's a wrestling connection in Marvel, all aspects of it too. Well, yeah, yeah Dragon Gargano I... like had those Marvel decorated um costumes to take over events. I think uh, Tegan Knox, like Captain Marvel. Yeah, no, gear. I think she had. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She did. Have, she did have Captain Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. I, it, for me, though, it's just it, like the whole thing with you know Batista being in there now, and then Give you have like all <laughs> yeah. But for but the thing about it with episode two, of Hawkeye is when he's looking down and he says Thanos is right. So it's yeah, just, yeah, in the in the bathroom, right? Yeah, when like, he's trying to get. When the guy wants his autograph, that's like that's so awkward. You don't like seriously. People are weird. Nobody... <laughs> so we're gonna wrangle back in. So Beth Phoenix announced that she is leaving NXT. That's why I wanted to compare and contrast with NXT because all the the fa- all the great talent in commentary has gone through there. Um, you know, Wade Barrett's on there. You know, so many great ones. Uh, do you think Beth? as a colleague commentator would do well on the main roster considering how talented she is and how long she was doing it for NXT and amazing she was. Do you see her possibly going up to where Renee was, but on a different side of it, like kind of like going on to the SmackDown side a little bit, just to give it a little more dynamic. I mean, McAfee and Cole are amazing, but if you add Beth to it for a different perspective, that would be interesting too. I think Someone asked me this question earlier. I had a really great answer. Um, I think Beth would be phenomenal as a commentator. She would. She would actually. She would pull in the same respect that that um, that um, Renee Young did. The only problem I see with it is that some like there are so many good commentators on so many good shows. You know what I mean? So you got like. Um, Pat McAfee, oh my God, that dude's he's the only reason I watch that damn show. That's so good. The dude is so exciting. He's excitable. Yeah. The dude makes he makes watching wrestling fun. Yeah. You know? And it's it is only because he's not a wrestler. He's not really so much of a wrestling fan. You see what he does legitly by like just the like just his excitement. Like he is like an excited, he's a super fan. He's an excited super fan. So when you see someone getting so excited about something, you get excited. It's like a meme I saw earlier today. A girl posted and she said, I love dogs. Because you can have the worst day and you can walk in your house and you can jump around and you can be excited about nothing. And your dog's going to fucking party with you because the dog's just going to get excited. Mm-hmm. He's like he's like the dog. He just gets excited. And you say, oh, wow. That energy is like contagious. I want to get excited too. So Pat McAfee is great. But if you put Beth Phoenix there, she's gonna get 
lost in the shuffle. Yeah, I don't think on, she would work on SmackDown with that crew. I don't think she would work exactly. With, you put yeah. her on SmackDown, you know, you got Saxon and you got Corey Graves and what is it, Vic Joseph? Um, uh, on Raw, it's, no, it's Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith, like Jimmy's the Jimmy's a straight guy. He's a straight man. Yeah. And then you got the clown, who is you know, who's Byron Saxton. And then you got the bad guy, the the, the heel commentator, who juices up the heels, but kind of like down talks the, fa- the 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 faces, but not really. And Corey Graves, where does that leave her? Yeah, I think like like when, yeah, if she was a third wheel, I think she'd be like she would be a third wheel like when they was on Raw because when they were and may not be good as a lead commentary as a host, whatever, she's good. But when she was the third, um, third person commentary, and while she was terrible, and it's not her fault. And then you also got to think about it too. Imagine having Vince screaming in your ear. Yeah. Like you're like, oh, that's okay. say it's a good headlock, pal. Say it, say it, say it. Like, dude, you would be like, oh my god. You know, you, yeah, you just go crazy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I think she would not be a good fit. I think NXT is where she should stay. I don't know if they're teasing her uh, with the with Edge and Miz and Maurice. I don't know if they're teasing her to like to do a short part of that little thing that's starting on the wall between the, the between Edge and uh, Miz with Maurice returning. I'm not sure it's going to return for me. I think she probably do if they're doing a, a mixed tag team at like day one or something. Maybe she'll do that. But it sounds like she's taking it easy because from her statement, like she wants to spend time more with the family. I guess. Yeah, with the with her two kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah, but she it, was doing commentary from home, wasn't she? No, she, no, she was for doing the first some. Part, she was. Yeah. yeah. Now she's there. She's her life. She's been her life. Yeah. Yeah, they've been going from the Carolinas down and stuff. To yeah. go do all that stuff. Yeah. I, but Beginning I think, she was. Beginning she was. I think more so that the, some of the comments in that promo Edge made with Miz was just poignant and funny. And as well. it just was like an old school Edge promo where he just tore Miz down and try, built him up and tore him back down and took him one side or the other. I didn't I, appreciate it, the firing comments though. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like that was that was really tasteless. You just fire yeah. a bunch of people, and you're gonna have some guy come on and talk about, oh well, <laughs> while you're off dancing with the stars, you should have been here to make sure your partner didn't get fired. It wasn't his if partner. I either. would miss. <laughs> I would have been like, hey, and you should have been the guy who instead of having live sex shows online on 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 Raw, you should have made sure your brother didn't get fired. Because remember, that was when Christian was still around, and Christian left to go to TNA. Yeah. So you could fire right back at him, you know, tit for tat. But then again, they try. Yeah, they try to like not do it. Because I thought it was I guess the, like a, are with not the Dev Morgan thing. The Dev Morgan thing. Too. I know they were trying to do. I know they were trying to make Becky Lynch. I know what the point of the promo was was to make Becky Lynch basically look like Charlotte Flair. Like Becky Lynch was the underdog. The point was to make it more like Charlotte Flair. How much Charlotte Flair is now, but Becky Lynch became like Charlotte Flair. That's how what they were trying to make her out to be. That's what the point of the promo was. But I thought they could do it a little, a little bit different without the. The big fat contract. That's why they're all my friends are gone. Yeah. Like she has I mean, I know they're trying to, I know what they're trying to do, and I see the point of view, but it was little, it could have gone a little bit different. Well, the thing for me was is that whether the promo was good or not, it was just, you know, they're giving Liv her due right now compared to where she, it could have been like, you she's, know, months and months earlier. Over us. She's, she's like over insanely us. over. People love Liv. Like, like you can't hate. And she like, stopped. She stopped. Like she started training with Brian Kendrick, and she learned lucha. You know, she yeah. went down there. She trained with Daga. She learned lucha. She's very good. Yeah, like, she is very good. I mean, from the Wyatt Squad, when you know when we had uh, Ruby mm-hmm. and Cerdo, Liv, what got me into the Wyatt Squad? It was not those two. It was actually Liv Morgan, because she was like she was so energetic and so like feisty and stuff she lifted people's spirits up and stuff like the way she was not just in ring and stuff but outside of the ring the hell she was it, it yeah. it's a person's personality yeah. everybody yeah. gravitates to yeah that's what she it, has it's insanely like how it is because you know if if there's somebody who's being positive about certain things they gravitate to them real quickly it doesn't matter about money or materialistic stuff it's the person mm-hmm. that matters like I, I i tell people all the time 
at the end of your days, it's not your car, your house, your computer, <laughs> your, your podcasts or anything coming right. to you <laughs> at, yeah. at the end of the, your life. It's just the people around you and, you know, gravitating to other stuff too. It's just, it's, it's such a good thing. And it's actually nice to see a good person actually get their due when they should have had it a while back. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's taking a long time for her to get where she is. Yeah, and it's way yeah, past that's her what time. They, so that's, that's what they, Not that's saying she don't deserve it. That's why it's good. Way past that's her. What, that's always good for her to be in the the, the wise cup with Ruby and Serlo because they're the both veterans, right? It's and Liv was still young. She was very young, right? She was like what, like 22, 23 at the time. So having experienced workers from the Indies was good for her. And now yeah. she's like rocking it on her own. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. But other than that, we just, you know, enjoy watching what she does. And it's way past the time on that. Because I didn't think she was ready for the main roster when she came up in 2017. I was like, why is Liv Morgan up here? And I'm like, why is Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville up here? Because the, those three were, like, were extremely green. <laughs> like, they weren't well, ready. But the thing also is, is that, you know, they WWE at that time looked like they needed more people in their divisions because of in that women's know, division because the, they were trying to build that tag division up. Well, they shouldn't release um, um, Emily, Emma at the time because they released Emma like a month before, right? They, <laughs> they, they this, the moves WWE makes does not make any sense yes. at all. <laughs> we don't want to talk it's about like that half the. <laughs> I mean, you re-signed Goldberg for a uh, for a contract, for a multiple match contract, <laughs> and it, he's done what three this year already? And it's like, okay, so what are you gonna do next year? You're gonna give him he another does three, three? A year for the next five years or something like that? Yeah, and oh, it's no. just why when you could use uh, you can equate that financial aspect to something else that would benefit you long term. I mean, think so about this. They got Goldberg had three matches this last year. One match was against Bobby Lashley, where Goldberg came down to his son's gym shorts. Um, <laughs> that was horrible. He had a match with the Undertaker at one point where it was so that was, horrible. Oh my doesn't, god! Yeah, Undertaker won't ever talk about it again. Um, mm -hmm. And then he had a match with the Fiend where he defeated the Fiend for the championship and totally ruined a gimmick that even the Undertaker was like, "This is going to be the next Undertaker." You just totally killed. I mean, I thought the Hell in a Cell thing was bad. That made it even worse. Yeah, yeah. You know, he he kind of, that that ruined that gimmick for sure. Like, I mean, that pretty much buried that gimmick. I yeah. for me though, I think it, with with Goldberg, they need to just let Riddle end it. Just give Riddle that opportunity just to end it. And they're cool now. Goldberg and Riddle are cool with each other now. They're not best friends. But... Make... They're not cool would... with each other. They are amical. cordial. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like there won't be no there won't be no matches because you know Goldberg still thinks that he'll beat Riddle's ass. And as much as I don't like Riddle, Riddle is an MMA fighter. He will kill Goldberg. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> it, it it's one of those things. It's something that I'm interested to seeing. I mean, if that match does happen, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Be I wouldn't be surprised if you do Goldberg or Roman Reigns at one point because Roman Reigns really has no legit competition on SmackDown. Well, that's because of the bad booking. Yeah. <laughs> the bad booking. <laughs> and there's and there's people saying, "Oh, is Roman Reigns getting stale?" I'm like, he's getting stale, but it's not his fault. The fault is there's no they're not building up any baby faces for him to face. Now they're probably going to go to Brock Lesnar and maybe Jeff Hardy. I don't know. I, I Lesnar's no. the only one I could see, but the thing about it is, is that yeah, at the that, end of the day, problem. they might end up doing a, a wild card kind of thing, and they might end up turning around. And I go back, go back. They this. always go. They always go to Buck Lesnar to make they try to get Roman Reigns over. It's the same way with Goldberg. Yeah. It's the just yeah. in case break yeah. here kind of idea. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's that oh the they, ratings are down. Get Goldberg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or we we need we need you know Hall of Famers get them in here. They're so desperate right now to find their rock. Well, not their rock. They kind of have never get the rock, moment, but they're trying mm -hmm. to find their Stone Cold or their Triple H, the ones that oh, because all three of them in the attitude era stirred the pot, mm -hmm. and like Sean and other components were just yeah. the side ingredients. But the problem—that's the problem. They're but you've so already got rid of guys that could have been that person. 
you've ruined it already. Yeah. You fire guys that could have been like the next rock of the, you know, like for instance, they got rid of the fiend. That was the next Undertaker. Yeah. You they know? got Braun Strowman. Remember, like in 2017, Braun Strowman was over. Like, yeah. Massively over. You got rid of him. Then all of a sudden, they want to give him some choo choo, choo choo train crap. And, <laughs> and they could, that, that was dead. Um, and then you got you got Finn Balor, who could be like the next Shawn Michaels, who could be oh, the next yeah. Bret Hart. What do you do? You fucking make the top turnbuckle break and blame it on look God. At, look at um, Nakamura. Look at Nakamura. Miro. 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 You oh, let yeah. Miro be Miro like he is in AEW? Bro, look at him. And, are you? Wow. Look at him. <laughs> I said I said that about Nakamura too. Like, what oh, have man. they done? I mean, yeah. what room with Nakamura was Ginger Mahal? <laughs> oh my god! I, I think also it's just they don't know which way to go, and they it's like that saying they oh it's like the left hand doesn't know what the right but hand's doing. I know it's kind early. Of I know it's early. But who do you see winning the World Wumbles in both the um, both men's and watch? I can't. I can't picture any. I can't see anybody in my mind who's going to win a World Rumble this year. Like, I no I can't. I already called it last year, <laughs> and I yeah, Bianca, back right? and forth. No, I was, mad. I was mad last year. I did a, I did a Royal Rumble because uh, I, I work I work with some. I'm, I belong to a WWE uh, producers group, and we do a uh, a pool every year, right? So I chose my winners for the Royal Rumble, and. By all rights, my winner, I should have won the Rumble. I chose number two, and I chose Edge. So when Edge won the Rumble at number one, yeah. I was pissed. I was like, <laughs> dude, they announced you at number two. Like, I drew number two. I drew number two. I drew you, and you decided you want to come out first. Totally <laughs> ruined it. I was like, that was 500 bucks I lost. Edge, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder Rosa I, text me, I won. I'm like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> I for me though, it was um I said being a homer, obviously. I mean Sasha, she, right? Yeah. It, Sasha, because also I mean I, I like having like saying I am a homer for side time. And I mean she did work for Chaotic for a while, so mm-hmm. uh but I thought she would win it. I still think that Bianca's the anomaly in the equation I have because I was going with this idea that the next four years at that point, because two out of the four have won a rumble, which was Becky and Charlotte. I yeah. thought the next in line would have been either Bailey or Sasha. Well, Bailey's I think pick for the rumble. I think it's going to be either Bailey or oh, Sasha. Oh, she's coming back end. early. Bailey's my pick for the Rumble. She's going to come. I back think she's going to do the John Cena spot at, at Madison you Square think, Garden. You think she's going to come back as a heel or a baby? She's going to come back at number thirty. <laughs> she's going to win it all. Oh yeah, you know what they they have have Charlotte and Becky still be champions at the time. And have Bailey come back as a baby face. I don't want to see her come back as the huggable Bailey, but come back as a baby face. Because I know Charlotte she has feuds with. Right? We haven't really seen her having a, a rivalry with Becky at all. We know Becky had it with Sasha and Charlotte, but she hasn't had one without Bailey. I, I have a theory about all this. And and Bailey, yeah. I, I would have, I would say it's out of full horsewoman. I think Bailey is the most smoothest in the ring. I, I'm going to say this, and this is a theory, and you guys could say about this. I think they're going to do an all or nothing match at Mania. I think with if Bailey wins the Rumble, you know, Becky's going to need somebody for it. And they might just do, they might just take the tag titles off of whoever is holding him now. That's how Carmella bad it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think they might throw him on, you know, like let's say Bailey and Sasha just, that's another case in glass break for that division. But if just do an all or nothing match and have all the titles on the line just for the one time, and it would make sense because then you get the dream match everybody wants. You get the four horror yeah. horse women match. You have the Raw and SmackDown title match, which would be a main event th- thing, and the women's tag titles. And it would literally give everybody that match that – long knock them drag down match and that could be night one's mania match in you know in dallas you need to knock dallas out of the park and the men's if they work with 
Dwayne in the right way, they can knock it out of the park and they can go from there. I think the Undertaker's going to come back in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. He's been doing yeah. a lot of promo work there. He lives in Dallas. Um, yeah. I think, though, okay, and this this is, I'm just going to say this before I go, guys. This is my, my prediction. This is how I would book the Royal Rumble. I would have I would have Bailey and Sasha, the last two people in the Rumble. Oh, and they both bump out at the same time. Oh, like block Big Show situation. And they both win the Rumble, and they both challenge, like Sasha would challenge Becky, and and Bailey would challenge Charlotte. But here's the caveat: Fatal Four Way. Both titles on the line at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Damn. That would be the biggest fucking women's match in the history of women's wrestling. The four horsewomen, both championships, fatal four way at WrestleMania, night one main event. If anybody saw the takeover match from like 2015, because they had that match in a takeover, it yeah, was take amazing. Respect. Yeah. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. That was just a glimpse. Man, I'm telling you, that's how I would book that shit. And if I would book it like that, money. And that's how it is years later. It's just, you know, now it's all magnifying. We got close by 2016, right, with Becky, Sasha, and Charlotte. We got in 2016, Mm -hmm. three of the four. But if you get all four horse, all four horse, dude. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for having me on. I got to get out of here. I got to get ready to do some. Well, we're going to wrap it up anyways, too. Yeah. Um, So. Tell them where they can find you, my friend, franchise. You can find us every Monday, Wednesday night, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast on BodySlam.net. We talk about everything SmackDown, Raw, Rampage, Dynamite, and we also talk about just random shit. Um, sometimes we throw on special guests, like we have Phil Lindsay from Grapsity on last night. Just, you know, we're going to have you guys on coming up this week. We just got some real cool stuff. Um, I got interviews with Homicide, Kevin Gill. Uh, I might have some stuff with the NWA coming up. Like, G's is going to be at NWA Power this weekend. Might do another interview with him. Maybe Tyrus, the television champion. Who knows? Um, Ring of Honor stars are coming around. Impact Wrestling people are asking for interviews. So, you never know, man. You can find us there. You can also find us on Twitter at the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. You can find me at the Bad Blood Brand. That is B A W D B L O O D B R A N D on Twitter. Like, share, subscribe on the Instagram gimmicks and all that other cool stuff. Um, I do, I do follow back. So follow your boy, um, Tony Khan. If you're listening, follow your boy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, go check out the YouTube page too. It's awesome. Totally listen. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, I, listen. And I'll be honest, a lot of the stuff I will listen to what you guys are doing. I'm like at work, or you know, if it's like something slower, if there's nothing going on. I'll put it on and I'll just sit back and enjoy it. That's the best times because you know you you learn a lot more that way. Oh yeah, um, I, I listen to podcasts all day at work, and I work for the television. I work for the news, so I have plenty of time. That's a joke. <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> tell them where they can find you. Um, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Aaron War or AWO. Um, I I do wrestling content, but I haven't done it in about a month. But I'll still do wrestling content. I've been doing a lot of Marvel content because there's a lot of Marvel stuff coming out. Um, to, I think, yeah, tomorrow um, I'm doing a Hawkeye episode 3 spoiler stream. I'm going to talk about what happened in the episode. Um, there's a lot of things revealed in the episode, and I'm going to talk about a little tease for next week's episode. I'm going to watch it tonight. So yeah. we're going to be rating tonight. We're going to rate uh, Love Wrestling's Quizplex tonight um, on Twitch. If you guys go check out Love Wrestling, you know, go check out the everybody that's on and all the stuff. Um, we did, uh, right before Thanksgiving, a thing for cancer. If you guys try donating, it'll help somebody else's life in and out every way. Um, other than that, you can find me on the usual places and do a good deed, pay it forward. Have a good night, guys. Have a good night. (laughs) That was awesome.